Hello world! Alright, I am back with another Python video for my Python programming channel. My previous video was a personal finance video where I talked about how I paid off my mortgage in seven years and how you could too and giving you tips. And so if that's something that interests you, it's not Python related, then uh, you can watch that here. And so I'm also back with another uh, Plotly video and uh, I'm kind of addicted to this library. Uh, I have, this is the third video in the playlist, so you can watch that whole playlist by clicking here. But uh, in previous videos, I talked about how I had a uh, website called the Financial Genome Project uh, .net, and it turned into just a written blog. But my overall goal was to programmatically collect data, economics data, and then display it on this website and for it to be interactive. And uh, I abandoned it because, again, it just turned into a written blog. And this Dash and Plotly library has kind of rejuvenated that spirit to keep going. And so let's check out this chloroform map that I created. Just kidding, it's not called chloroform. I just, the real word is choropleth map. Choropleth. And so uh, let's check out what I made. That word is hard for me. All right, so what we have here is a, uh, well, I'm going to just, you can see the bar right there. It has a blue color scale map. And it has this cool, uh, we're going to look at 2019 real income per capita. And we can hover over all the states. And you can see the uh, per capita per person. So this is the average real income. And then it color codes it, and this is all done by the Plotly library. So as we can see, Wyoming and North Dakota have these darker blue. Uh, Connecticut has darker blue and Texas. And the reason probably why I have to look into the data, I just found a cool data set, is probably because the uh, oil and gas up here and there's not a lot of people, so when you divide it by person, you know what I mean, the, the denominator is much lower. All right, so what's cool is that when I hover over it, nothing happens, I haven't programmed any clicking, but I live in Louisiana, and so the next step for me would be to click on Louisiana and it to do maybe a per county wealth or something like that. So let's go through the code now. So, but first, welcome to the 158th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. This is the uh, third video in this Plotly playlist. And so please consider, consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in data visualization or if you're interested in Python programming robotics, AI, or you just want to see me keep building my digital assistant. And I hope you like this video and then leave a comment if you've done an amazing data visualizations because I can watch it for, uh, I can just look at data visualization all day to include the subreddit, uh, data porn, uh, prawn they call it. And so let's go into the code now. So first you have to find a data set. So I found this uh, cool data set here from the uh, Chamber of Commerce website. So this personal income, state and local, and I put the real personal income by state. And then that created a, uh, let's go to my downloads. That gave me a zip folder here. So I extracted that and there was just a bunch of data in there. I chose this right here, this uh, SIRP by state. And then I saved it. Um, that is a comma separated values. I just called it data for easy. All right, so this is the data set that we have here. Uh, if we're going to use pandas data frame and just make sure you have columns here. So that's how we started off. So then we're going to import pandas as PD. Uh, you do have to pip install pandas if you're on a fresh screen. 
Then you have to import plotly.graph underscore objects as go. So graph objects. And so you have to pip install plotly as well. Then we're going to do df, so that's the standard for data frame, equals pd, which is pandas, dot read underscore csv. And then I called my csv file data. And make sure it's in your root folder up here. And then you can just call it by its name. If you had it in your downloads file, you would have to copy the full path like that using forward slashes, not backslashes. But since it's in my root folder, I could just put data.csv. Then, um, so if you want any text to come over on the hover, let's run this again so you can see. Then you're going to have to say, tell um, your program what's going to be in the text. You could put a bunch of stuff, right? Um, but I just want the data frame known as text to equal state colon space plus the data frame of geo name so what is geo name that is what this data set called the state okay then you're going to create a figure so fig equals go so that's the graphed objects dot figure and in parentheses you're going to put multiple values here so first you're going to go data equals go dot coropleth then you're going to open uh, that bracket up and put more data in there locations is data frame code so if you look in your data so it is going off the two letter designation in this this is a column I had to add myself unfortunately um, but anyways here's the code here that you need to identify the states so Let's go back to my program then the access that I want on there Z equals data frame 2019 so that's the most current data and then we're going to make it type float right so this is the data that we're going to color code the location mode I want this to understand that these are USA states if you're going to do a world map you'd have to let the location mode know that it's uh, countries this color scale we chose is blues but we can change that to reds if you like I don't like the color red so okay there you go easily switchable to reds just don't like reds at all reds always look like it's down to me right it's negative uh, color bar title or color bar underscore title so this is the I don't know why I keep closing out of it is the title above the thing right here my pie charm is giving me an error because it's expecting a dictionary and we got a string instead so I'm not sure why my pie charm is yelling at me but press on so then the text this is what your hover text is going to be so data frame text and we put that there uh, you could put a lot more here if you want as well and so you would just have to um, put this in brackets put commas just like um, a whole list of things and you can just fill it up so every time somebody hovers over it it can tell you a lot more maybe the population so this number right here this 50,000 per person and the TX the code that's automatic that's the automatic label that uh, that uh, the coropleth figure gives you but we added the state as well then you're gonna close it off well you're gonna close it off here this is the coropleth then you're gonna close it off here which is the go dot figure then we're gonna do this is for the whole figure itself so figure dot or fig dot update underscore layout that's where you put the title text here so I just put the 2019 real income and that is shown here we can change that font if we wanted to the size we can center it whatever then the geographic scope or the geo underscore scope we're just gonna leave that as USA because we want to limit the map scope to USA this does have the capability of doing the whole world oops doing the whole world if that's gonna be your cap 
And then instead of the locations being USA states, you'd have countries. Then we uh, just pass it that to for this. And then we do fig.show. So what we're not doing is using the dash to make a local hosted website like we did in previous videos, but you could easily do that. This, I just, uh, for the sake of this video, just the showing of the figure. All right. So again, I am addicted to visualizations. I hope somebody else wants to use this chloroform, just kidding, choropleth map, and I hope this video helps. If it did, please like the video. If you're working on something cool that's uh, amazing with data, please leave a comment, and thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.